order. Roll call of Alderman. Alderman Heisman? Here. Here. Meyer? Holt? Here. Anderson? Here. Rudowitz? Here. Carpenter? Here. Hart? Here. Silsby? Here. Hayden? Here. Cyber? Here. Martinson? Here. Elmore? Schneider? Here. Musgrove? Here. 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 Alderman Meyer and Alderman Elmore are excused. Roll call department heads. Police Chief Clay. Fire Chief Langston. Here. Mike Flynn. Here. Ken Vaughn. Here. Royce Carlisle. Jamie Matron. Here. Tim Gregowitz. Here. Jim Schneider. Here. Leander Spearman. Here. Emily Holtz. Here. Chuck Schaefer. Bob Sable. Here. Royce Carlisle, Chuck Schaefer, Chief Clay. And I failed to uh, uh, also say that Linda Fields are all excused. If you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, before we start public participation, after talking with the fire chief today, and has been a news copy for several days, and after talking with the city attorney, I am going to uh, sign an executive order uh, effective immediately that all fireworks, even though we really, when you look at our ban, we don't have a lot that we technically approve. It's pretty minimal. But we're going to ban all fireworks until further notice. Uh, due to these extremely dry conditions. It's very dangerous. The chief and I talked again just a little while ago. Um, it's a situation where we don't want to take any chances. Hopefully, people will execute good judgment. Um, I'm hoping that this doesn't put an extreme extra burden on our police department, but it's very dangerous and it's extremely dry. This is unusually dry. And um, we thought maybe we'd get some rain a while ago, and it hasn't happened. And, whether we do or not, we've made, I've made a decision. This is permitted. The mayor can write an executive order uh, based on health and safety of the citizens, and so I'm going to do that. Hopefully in the next, it looks like now, this could carry on for another week at least. And so it's very clear that we are going to ban all fireworks. So with that said, I just thought I'd say that right off the bat. The other thing I'll take the liberty to do that probably is very unusual I just want to say, this is uh, Laura Goresh's last meeting. She's changing uh, positions, she's changing careers, and she came to see me the other day, and uh, Laura is, as is, 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 much as it's not always easy talking to the press, she has been probably the easiest person to speak with, and uh, I do appreciate uh, her, uh, the, the time that we've had many long conversations, and I just want to wish her well, so Laura, best of luck. Somebody else, wasn't the chief, but somebody had mentioned that to me earlier. Uh, I, we will talk tomorrow morning, Scott. I'll give you a holler, and uh, Donnie Sachs will uh, we'll look at making an a, a announcement, and that's probably a, a wise decision because of the extreme conditions. So uh, no doubt we'll do that. Okay? All right, now that we have those uh, unexpected announcements out of the way, we will go to public participation. If you'd like to speak this evening, please step up to the microphone, give your name and address, Try to keep your comments to about two to three minutes, uh, if you could. Anyone this evening interested? Yes, ma'am? Um, this is a good comment. Um, I hope so. <laughs> well, normally we're all, um, the West End had a little, like, um, festival or whatever you want to call it. And um, I was out there and I didn't know anything about it until I'd seen the paper Gateway Dot Dog. They had over a hundred dogs participate in this jump. It was something good for the West End of Belleville because it's a double crossing. And as I was walking through some of the lots there, I heard a lady say, oh, we can eat at um, Buffalo Wild Wings. And they were suggesting stores and all that to shop to if you needed something in that. And I was just wondering if you could send 
John gave us the address. I think in part in asking if telling them that we would like for them to come back next year. Because it brought people in from Indiana, Missouri, and there was fellow people there participating, and then there was other people just sitting. The bleachers were full. Well, I, 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 I can certainly send them to the main society or something, right? No, it's um, Gateway, Doc Dogs, but and was, the Belleville area. Wasn't the main society with the benefactor? They were the ones that came to us and asked permission for. Well, they were one of the right? um, sponsors. Yeah, they were yes. the ones that came to the council and asked permission. And they even um, were able to adopt some dogs out as hot as the weather was. There was a lot of people there. And I just thought, if we could get them back next year, it's something for a family thing. Did you leave the, leave the information you have there with uh, it Jennifer? Didn't, it didn't take extra police to put on this. No, we cooperated with the providing benches. I think the mother went out to build stuff. And, Pool, etc. So we were. You know, but what I'm seeing is there was people from all over there. If you don't sell me, I agree. I think it's great. Well, I, I great. didn't know if you would send a thank you and ask no, them to come be, back I'll be next happy year. To. I'll be happy to. All right. So if you get that to Jennifer, and uh, I'll also send one including that Jennifer remind me to uh, the Humane Society for actually uh, coming to us, because they're the ones that came to us and got permission originally. And it, it was, there was a lot of families there. The bleachers were completely full all Good. the time. Anyone else is speaking? Yes, sir. Michael Hackberg, 701 Centerville. Um, I want to talk tonight the uh, solicitor licenses. I noticed tonight that there's a couple on there. But what does it really matter? Um, I had somebody come to the house the other day at 8.30 at night. I, you know, selling alarm systems. I don't know whether they're casing, finding out who has alarms, who doesn't. Uh, there's no way that I know whether these people are valid or not. Do they have a license or don't they have a license? Well, you'd have to call the police, sir, and then yeah. check them. I mean, but is it to the point where even if somebody is valid, every house they go to, that resident's going to call the police station to find out if they're valid? The reality was I paused a movie, told the guy to get lost, and went back to watching my movie. And, and um, in your case, you, you felt comfortable. Some people only feel comfortable going to the door. Yeah. But what I would say is that could we get posted on the website a list of people who have valid licenses and that way I know that this person may or may not have a valid license? I think that's something we can probably do. We're, we're going yeah. to transition to the website, but I think we can probably get that done. Yeah. I mean, because afterwards I found yeah. out, I went looking for it, found rules for solicitors and found out they can't solicit after 5 p.m. I don't know if that's true anymore, Mike. That was just Time limits are different. Okay, then update the website with the rules for solicitors. Chief had a head of the, uh, the ones that have been uh, in the past and been issued, uh, they have an ID card. Did this, did this person have an ID card? He had an ID card that said Vivint on it. But, but nothing, uh, I, nothing that you could discern that was issued from the city of Belgium? No. That's the same one that was at my house over the weekend. And um, I asked for pulling on the element. I asked for his ID. He said, oh, I don't have it with me. I have floors and I have all these, but I don't have a belt. Did you call and tell us who was there? I called, and I have to be honest with you. When I gave the name of the company, I was trying to write the name. You know, when you look at something, you're reading. That's what I read in the car. It was from um, Ida. It was an orangey red car. Yeah, it was a bit of -I -D -I -D. And he was from out of state. So. And I was trying to get the plate number in that, and I couldn't get it. And he said, well, I'm just going to go on down the street. We, we, yeah, we need to know that, because we just rejected one that didn't pass the, the background check. And we specifically, so those calls would have been very helpful, because if they didn't pass the background check, and, and, and they, they get notified, you know, we pass it on that they are a suspect. I mean, this is something that I saw him up on 10th Street. I'm on close to 7th, so he's heading towards your house, and he gets there in a couple of days. Yeah. But he was real smart. Something. Had all of the yeah. license that he had around his chain, and I said, "Well, where's Belva?" And he got real smart with yeah. me. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, it's like, are we really going to bother the police for something like that? Or no, you but, but you got to understand, you're, you get a question you raise is valid. Uh, yeah. Occasionally, we get people who are casing houses. Unfortunately, we do have burglaries, the daytime burglaries, yeah, and so it is it is a valid concern. And while the police are very busy. I think if we have these suspicions, we need to share that because they could make a difference in some of these Okay. Okay? Thank you. All righty. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, 
Uh, Rick Brown, 632 South Pennsylvania Avenue, Valvo, Illinois. Um, I'll talk about that memo again from the last meeting, the one that you guys have seen. Um, written by um, James Carter. This first memo, everybody, is spot on. Now, I haven't seen the email yet that they're sending, but this memo is right on the money. I just want to know who was the one that thought of the lie to tell to the alderman and everybody out here and me last week about what happened in court. Was it you, Mayor, or was it you, Mr. Flynn? I described what happened in court. Really? Well, gee, I just happened to have the official transcript of what happened in court. And uh, I'll read a little bit of it to you because you really enjoy this. You all of them that, uh, that aren't uh, good government party members, um, I wouldn't want an attorney to work for me to lie to. You members of the Aldermen that are good government party members, you shouldn't want that either. The court, so every time somebody moves out, you're saying you have to get a new one, they're talking about the occupancy permit, and then when they move back in, you've got to get another one. Mr. Flynn, right, I mean the court. Tell me where in the ordinance it says all that. You know, you and I have had this discussion before, which means the court has warned the city of Belleville. Mr. Flynn, yes, we have, Your Honor. The court, I don't think it's very clear, and certainly the permit itself tells somebody anyone occupying must be named here on. It doesn't say that if the person moves out, you got to leave them, or if the expectation is that they're going to come back at some point in time. Any person not named who moves on these premises is violating the ordinance. Mr. Flynn, well, I mean, I understand when they go on vacation, because she'd ask if they went on vacation. The court, well, I don't know what I heard, honestly. You know, the, the, the uh, I mean, this is the court again. I mean, I have a tough time holding somebody, not the defendant, somebody responsible for an ordinance that I don't think is very clear. She's not talking about the defendant. She's not talking about the particular case. If that person, uh, well, I don't see anything about if that person moves out or when you're get, you've got an obligation to go and remove them from the occupancy permit. I think it's probably implied, but I don't think it's very clear. You know, it, but if you can point something out that I'm missing, I'm more than happy to do that. Mr. Durango, who is the attorney for um, uh, Mr. Griffin, may I interject one thing, Your Honor? The court, you're winning, so I would suggest that you don't. You know, um, the court, I don't think there's a clear mandate to Joe Q. Public, not Mr. Griffin, Joe Q. Public, that uh, of what requirements are when somebody no longer resides there. And I would love to see something like that, and I consider myself to be a fairly intelligent person, but I don't know how somebody is supposed to look at this, at least the provisions that have been shown to me, and understand what the requirements are, how often they're supposed to update it. It's not in here. I think it's not, it's, it's all very unclear, but, Mr. Flynn, okay. Now, you know, it, it, she's not talking about Mr. Griffin. She's talking to the city of Belleville, telling them that your ordinance is deficient. And yet you guys, I don't know which one of you thought of this, you know, to tell everybody that stuff that wasn't true that went on in the courtroom, and then so you can write more tickets to Belleville citizens so you can collect your seventy-five dollars to $500 from each other. The court has said that it's all up there. How's it? She didn't even understand it. Now, I mean, if I had an attorney to lie to me, I'd fire him. You know, the rest is up to you guys, but I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, if this has happened here, and especially since the city was warned before, and it's right here in the transcript. So don't, you know, you don't sit here trying to make a fool out of me up here when I'm telling the truth, and that's what I'm here for tonight, the truth. And we didn't hear it last week from up there. You understand that? Thank you, Mr. Brown. You're welcome. I'd like to respond to that. First of all, Mr. Flynn, if you quote the transcript, is my son. It wasn't me. I was not in court. I was describing to you what I was told happened in court. And the comments really are still consistent with what I stated before. The entire ruling is premised upon the fact that the defendant did, in fact, have a certificate of occupancy with his name on the certificate. It was never removed, even though the individual had been coming and going on a sporadic basis over a long period of time. With that set of facts, the ordinance was somewhat unclear to the judge as to whether or not that individual was violating the terms of the ordinance because he still had a certificate of occupancy with his name on it. And that's what I reported. No, that isn't what you said. Mr. Brown, 
that is, that's, what I, that's what I reported to everybody, and that's what I would still maintain, because that is what happened. Who told Sparger to write the first memo? I think it was very clear, it was Chief Clay. Who told Chief Clay to tell Sparger to write the memo? If you're implying, was it me, the answer is no, because I didn't, until the memo was sent the day afterwards, I didn't even know the memo was sent. Why do you want to write tickets to people on an ordinance that is vague? Mr. Brown, we, we're not going to discuss this anymore. I know you don't want to discuss anything when you guys are getting caught up in stuff. No, there's nothing about that, but we're not going to, re, we're not going to relive the whole situation again. We went through it last meeting. Uh, you, boy, was Somebody sorry. did not tell the truth from up there, where you're sitting. Sir, I'm telling you, and this is the last comment. The police department wrote the directive with the, with the this situation with the memos that you questioned. That's the facts. I didn't, and as you uh, apparently raised the question today, I never told anybody not to provide anything to you. Your FOIA will be ready in a day or so that you requested, and everything will be there. We have nothing to hide. And Mr. Flynn explained, you know, what he just did now. We're going on. Next person. I have some questions. I don't understand who issued the order to rescind the memo. The order to rescind the memo was Chief Clay and asked, told, or told Lieutenant Colonel Sparger to write the memo. And then 15 minutes or a next day, because the memo didn't go out to the next day because of a glitch with the computer, um, probably 15 minutes after uh, the memo was out to the, to the men and women of the police department, Chief Clay uh, had Captain Sachs, who was at his, at that moment, happened to be in the office, write the memo to change the to the current memo. Resending the first one. Okay? Captain Sachs wasn't I'm, at the meeting. I wasn't at the court. Well neither was Chief Clay. Neither was Mike Flynn. And he just explained his son was there who was represented. That's exactly right. And okay. I hope he was the one that was responsible for the first memo. Because he's the hero here. He's the one that got it right. Mr. Brown, I just said to you, you're, you're, you've had your chance to speak. Do you have another question, Alderman? Okay, you were, your understanding of events is this court case took place, the officer came back and reported to the chief, the chief did you know. And if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Flynn, the officer wasn't in the courtroom. I'm not sure who, who reported to the chief, but my understanding as to which officer reported to the chief was an officer who was not present in the court when the trial was held. Okay, so there's several, we're playing a game of telephone. She said, she said, it's all, okay. Apparently. All right, so the chief issues the memo, there's a computer glitch, it goes out. What then happened to change the chief's mind? I sent a letter to the chief explaining what happened in the courtroom. Okay, that's, that was kind of what I was trying to get Yeah, to. I did send a letter to the chief, and shortly after that, there was a second memo issued by the police department. Okay, can we get a copy of your letter? If you're requesting it, I would Yes, I would like to. I, I would also like to know why this case was not listed on your report. None, none of the individual arguments cases are ever listed individually. Not well, every I a list of... Your quarterly report signed by you, those, David those, Gilbert. Those are all housing cases, demolition cases. But none of those are arguments. Twenty-three demolitions. Oh yes. I mean, I don't know what the number is in that article. But yes, that would be probably correct. Okay, it says and I have I, pending one hundred and sixty yeah. ordinance violations. Right. That, that's where that case would be included. Okay. Are you? Do you ever report back to the council on what happens? On the 160 or more that are constantly being tried, never. Let me do this. Is there any more public participation? Or is it just the alderman? I'm going to close public participation and I'll recognize you, Alderman Schneider. Alderman Schneider, go ahead. We're hearing this, this, and this, but we have nothing in front of us of what we're hearing what's talked about. Is there any way that we can get, or do we FOIA to get a copy? You, you know, first of all, I need to FOIA. If you're all wanting a copy of the two memos in Mr. Flynn's letter, which is basically all there is, is that right, Chief? That's correct. That's all we determined today, went back. I have nothing written. I gave nothing, no written order about this situation. 
we will get each of you in your box tomorrow um, a copy of the two letters that was written by the police department uh, and the, the letter of the response from Chief, from Mr. Flynn. That's all we have. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. We're hearing something, but we have nothing in front of us to hear what we're, well, what we're hearing about. So how do we even know how to make a comment? I don't, we will get you that, but I think that nobody's trying to, nobody else since the last council meeting has called or asked any questions of you or I or the chief, or as I care, Chief Sparger sitting shaking his head no. No one in the last two weeks has asked a question until Mr. Brown here tonight, you know, raises some more questions. So all you gotta do, we'll we'll have copies of all this in your boxes tomorrow. So I mean, you know, it's just a question we're asking because that's fine. Okay. I don't even know what they're Okay, I'm concerned though when I hear the judge say, I've talked to you about this before about an ordinance well, being fake. Well, first of all, if, if, if you want to, uh, you know, have a discussion with Mr. Flynn, I think we can do that other than a council meeting right now. I think you don't want, you want to set up a meeting and you want to have a phone call with him. But to have Mr. Brown read a portion of the transcript and, and take that verbatim, I think you need, you need to read the whole thing. Or, I have, actually. Well, then that's fine. So why don't you call and make an appointment and talk to Mr. Flynn and maybe but you I have think it needs to be discussed publicly. I understand it's not on the agenda. Well, it's not on the agenda, and, and but like I said, you, you, well, then you could call me, you know, the agenda gets published by Friday morning. If somebody would have called me Thursday or Friday, we could have put it on together. Well, I don't get it until late Friday afternoon. Well, you, but you've obviously talked about this since the last council meeting. You didn't, you know, this wasn't nothing on the agenda that spurred your interest tonight. It was a conversation, obviously, with Mr. Brown. So you would have called us if you had these uh, yearnings. We'd have put it on the agenda. So, so much for that. Mr. Hayden, I'm going to take one more question about this topic. I, I just have a general question uh, based on response from the city attorney, and that is who provides the overview of the 166 cases that you just mentioned? I do. Who provides the overview of you? Police Department writes the tickets. There has to be overview, Mayor, at the top of, of, of who has the overview discretion of what is going on with these cases from a, a reporting uh, point of view. And, and I don't believe it I trust either. our police chief and our city attorney to coordinate these, and, and as they always have for all these years. And I, unless there's a specific problem, and there's been questions raised in this one, and we'll have further discussion. But they have done a, a great job over the years from the police administration and the <coughs> city attorneys uh, seeing that these are properly handled. Your Honor, I'm not questioning how well or good or bad a job they did. The question I ask is, is there any overview over the city attorney? I do not overview. The, the mayor does not <coughs> overview every ticket issue. No. I do not. And it would be virtually very difficult to do that. But you, you don't see the outcomes of, of those cases? I, I don't see that I need to micromanage the chief of police and the city attorney on each and every ticket that goes to court. I, I don't Now, if there's a particular problem or situation, then we will have discussions, meetings, follow up, or whatever it takes. And we'll get to the bottom of it. But it's not necessary, I don't believe. It never has been in the past. Uh, I don't see him in here at the moment, but Chief Delaney was a past chief. Chief Sparger's here. Chief Clay's on vacation this week. But, you know, we've never, we've never, and I don't know of any mayor prior to me who's gone through and overviewed every ticket. Never I'm, done. I'm, I'm not debating. I'm just asking if there's an overview process. That's not, all not I wanted to know. That's all I wanted to know. I'm not debating. Okay. With that all said, we will then go to, uh, we don't have any, particular presentations. We have a, 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 not a presentation, we'll have a motion in a little while, about a couple of motions. In your, in your, in your uh, agendas tonight, you have the recognition of the character word of the month, citizenship, meaning doing your share to make your community better and being a good neighbor. This time we go into reading of the minutes. I ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the regular city council that have been held on June 18, 2012. Do I hear a motion? So Motion by Alderman Consilla, second by Alderman Heisler. I note here that, uh, Jennifer, that we had this copy here of some... 
Yeah, you want to, this is a, if you see there was a few questions in the last one, you want to hear the highlights because we're actually approving, this is the uh, amended version that you requested, and would you highlight that please? Sure, on page one, uh, bottom paragraph, um, third line from the bottom, um, just a grammatical error, praise was changed to P-R-E-Y-S. <coughs> Page two, second paragraph, uh, second sentence, requirements four, rather than or. Uh, let's see, also page two, second to last paragraph. Um, since then, the memo has been rescinded. conducting the meetings rather than following the conduct of the meetings. So, uh, Alderman Scancilla and Heisler, do you accept those changes as pointed out by the Assistant City Clerk? Yes, sir. We have a motion to second to uh, accept the minutes with those noted uh, changes. Any other additions or corrections? All in favor of accepting the minutes and having them filed signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion clear. Motion carries. Claims payroll disbursements, what's your pleasure? Yes, Your Honor, I move to have the claims payroll disbursements be paid. Motion by Alderman Anderson, do I hear a second? Yes, Your Honor. Second by Alderman Carpenter, do I hear any discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rizzowitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. 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 Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Markinson? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Oral reports. Alderman Anderson. Yes, Your Honor. On behalf of Mass Assertion, we'd like to make a motion to approve the long term control plan construction fee request number 24 from Gordon B. John to the 2 Way Mission for a total amount of $1,706,689.25. And I so move. Second, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Anderson, second by Alderman Hayden to approve that pay request from Gordon B. John for the ongoing work at the sewage treatment plant. Uh, discussion? Yes, ma'am. It actually says application 23 on it. The amount matches what you said, but it's not 20. This one says 23 and the agenda says 24. I think, Jamie, do you know it's 24? I know, yeah. It's actually 24. It's 24. Okay. Easy solve. So this paper it matches uh, number 24. We have to approve 24. Master Sewer just approved 24. So with that being said, roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rogelitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Art? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Orland? Aye. Motion carries. We have a request for a solicitor's license for the following employees of Edward Jones Investments. Charles S. Gerlinger and Nicholas E. Heckelman. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion by Alderman Kinsella. Second, Your Honor. Second by Alderman Heisler. Your Honor, yes. They're setting up offices, aren't they? Edward Jones. <coughs> Edward Jones, what I, what I understand, and I know some of them are not doing that or not, they usually set them out in the field first and they go into their office. 
So that's part of their requirements, but they've been they've been on the agenda numerous times. Mr. Hayes. Okay. On the abstract application matter, are they supposed to put specific dates and times, or does one application just says ASAP? Well, I think that what they're saying is they want to get started as soon as they're approved. Well, right. right. Yes. I mean, do we ask, do we force them to state which dates? No, because so we, we never know how quick the background check's going to come back. So in many cases, as far as the starting date, they're trying to get a date as soon as we can get approval. Um, in other words, tomorrow, once we get back into the office, they'll be notified by Jennifer. They'll be given a, a, a letter or email immediately that says they're, they're passed and they're approved. Ready to go. But, do, but do they... Then they can solicit forever, or, or how no? Long? It's a time period. Uh, and Edward Jones, I guess, is they normally have a time period. So oh, I'm sorry. This approval is through this fiscal year. Okay, through so this fiscal year. Anytime during, during this time fiscal time year. Oh, yes. Time. Right. I'm sorry. I knew that. I just was drawing blank. We have a motion. We have a second. Yes. Question. Discussion. Mr. Foyle, I'll ask if his son or somebody to come. There is some federal law, I guess, about their rights, and, and that's why some of these things were changed a number of years ago. We saw the Constitution. And they have, they have, we had a much more strict ordinance we followed years ago. And it was, uh, we were reminding at that time that we were more stringent than what we were allowed to be. You know, there are some in this council who would like to say no to any solicitation, but unfortunately, that's not, the court doesn't approve that. I mean, they, they, they frown upon that. But since the whole rule, can't we just set, okay, you get the license for so many days, and then you can't be on the street after 5, by 30? I think you're entirely right. I think the conversation to put this on the agenda for our desk would be good. In the meantime, I'll ask Mr. Flynn whether or not he can get this. a lot of this questioning and have 8.30 at night, someone knocking on your door, or Sunday, I don't think they should be allowed to be out on Sunday. We're home rule. We should be able to. I have no real problem with that, Adam. Do you have a current time? They're already prohibited from, you know, day to day <coughs> at night and Sundays and so on. It's just that the number of people don't follow the rules. Do you have the current ordinance? Let's, let's get everybody a copy of the current ordinance. Let's put it on the agenda if you want to have a discussion. In the committee is the place to do it, and that's fine. But there are some, over the years, some circumstances. Maybe Mr. Flynn can write a little bit of history for you, or a little paragraph. That kind of reminds you that there are certain things that um, well, that's why constitutionally. I'm asking. We don't know unless you ask a question. And we'll have a discussion at the at the uh, at the ordinance committee meeting. Uh, we might want to note that it moves this month because of it moves to the seventeenth. Moves to the seventeenth of July at at six p.m. in the council chambers, right, Jim? Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. Moving on. Uh, so we have a motion of the second to approve it. Right. All in favor of approving these two solicitors, as just explained a few minutes ago, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now we move on. Now we come to a, a nice part of the evening. At this time, I'd ask for a motion to approve the promotion of Sergeant Matt Icecamp to Lieutenant and to pro approve the pro a promotion of Rob Thomason, Patrolman, to Sergeant. Okay. Okay. Motion by Alderman <laughs> Silsby. Second by Alderman Arlen. Yes. And do I have any discussion? Roll call. Chrysler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Holtz? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Orlick? Aye. Nice to hear that unanimous. Chief Sparger, do you want to introduce these two gentlemen? This is uh, Matt Eichkamp. Sergeant Rob Thomas.
after their promotion. So it's probably, it's probably just as well that Rob and I have been camping together. We may have some stories that I don't necessarily want to hold. I'll tell you what, you know, I've worked with both of these gentlemen for a dozen or so years that they've been here. I don't want to sound like a doting parent or anything, but I watch them grow. I watch them assume additional responsibilities on the department. And I'm, and I'm very proud of both of them. And I, and I tell you that uh, with officers like this, uh, I'm confident that uh, the future as far as leadership in the department is going to be in good hands. So congratulations to both of them. Good luck in the new assignment. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's most of the room on that side. All the family of these two people, stand up. Family and friends. <laughs> it's nice to see the support, and, and uh, I, I thank you on behalf of the city. You know, when, when new officers and firemen and policemen come on board now, we've had a tradition the last uh, seven years. When we swear them in, we we always meet in here, and, and I, I, I have a talk with them, the chief and I do, about character and about uh, leadership and, and what the city expects of them. And uh, I've known these two guys here for a long time. Uh, and I, I know that, as uh, Colonel Sparger just mentioned, uh, we've got some outstanding young leadership coming up, and, and these are certainly two, two of the best, and I look forward to working with them and, and, and challenge them to keep doing 110% like they do. Uh, we need it. It's the time right now. We need uh, we need this kind of leadership and this kind of effort. So, thank you very much, and thanks to all the family and friends for being here. Moving on, we have a. Uh, I'm asking for a motion to approve a contract for approximately 2,500 square foot of additional asphalt resurfacing to the Premier Drive project, with the low bidder of Gleason Asphalt in the amount of 22,000. This is additional. Um, if you read the supplement, it kind of explains it. When, when the city engineer originally did his scope, we wanted to do this whole thing right away, but we were afraid of his projections initially were that what we submitted was going to be about 200,000. Well, the contractor's been hungry right now, and this bid came in about 130, wasn't it, Tim? 105. 105, so, really, you know, so we were, we were definitely over-projected. When I went back out with Tim the other day to take a look at the, the drainage situations, and he updated me, uh, I said to Tim, this section here, this block, block and a half, this 2,500 square foot, really needs a bad. And then a couple of the business owners came out. So we talked to the two aldermen of the ward, and uh, this is it's a change order. It, Lisa is the low bidder. This was originally going to be on the scope. We pulled it out because we thought we had too much project in for trying to balance the budget work out. So that's what's before you here now, and I ask for a motion to approve this change of order. Motion by Alderman Seibert, second, second by Alderman Martinson. Any discussion? Roll call. Eisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Prejudice? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. 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 Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Orland? Aye. Motion carries. This time I ask for a motion to approve the city entering into a lease finance, financing agreement with Commerce Bank for the purchase of the new 75 foot ladder fire truck. Pumper, pumper ladder truck, don't you? It's a pumper ladder truck. Yeah. Okay. Um, the terms of the lease will be 10 years at an interest rate of 2.58%. I know Jamie brought this up at the uh, finance meeting and said that. Right. The, yeah, last. And, and that we would bring it straight to council. Everybody agreed, I believe, because of the terms of the, you know, getting these quotes. We just got these quotes just a day or two ago. Do I hear a motion? So moved here. Motion by Alderman uh, Martinson, second by Alderman Cyber. Discussion? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to say thank you to the finance director for composing the narrative and the supporting documents. Duly noted. Roll call. Eisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Regiments? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Orland? Aye. Motion carries. This time I'd ask for a motion to grant permission to our Parks and Rec to sell or donate double swimming pool items to nonprofit organizations or sell them to anyone interested. 
The event of the sale will take place on Wednesday, July 18, 2012, from 9 until noon. Uh, let's first of all ask for a motion for that. So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Heister, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Kinsella. Let me just explain before there might be a question. We don't have a lot left. Um, it's really, I think there's a list in the thing, right? We included a list. Um, there are probably a couple other swimming pools in the area that might want to uh, offer a few bucks. This isn't brand new stuff, but to keep it until the time comes that the next pool comes around, it's, it's, uh, we're going to be looking at new equipment at that time, I'm sure. Uh, there's some flotation devices, some kickboards. There's some concrete picnic tables that uh, we've used all we can, and uh, kind of a little concerned about the concrete that they're not anchored that they might tip and park shame. So um, we, uh, Debbie and, and, and Jim and, and the staff, and, and, and they offered a lot of stuff to various departments where some other department might take advantage of a piece of equipment. But this is the list that's left. We'd like to try to sell it, and if we don't, at least gives us permission to donate it to a non-for-profit. Okay, I'm a little confused on how you see the event running. It's just it, they're gonna they're gonna have, they're gonna contact a few of the other pools in the area. We'll put it on the web. Uh, maybe there'll be a maybe there'll be an item line in the paper. Maybe there won't. But uh, we're trying not to spend a whole bunch of money advertising because there's no significant dollar value here. Right. It's just per city ordinance, we can't sell or give away anything without council approval. We can give a transfer within city property from one department or one building to another. And I can authorize that, you know, but I, we cannot sell or donate. So what we're doing here is a lot of it will most, like, most likely could be donated maybe to the Y, maybe somebody else wants it for, you know, a not-for-profit, but, but we need permission to do that. Okay? So we have a motion and we have a second. Roll call. Eisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Holt? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Park? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Communication. Communication from Belleville Historical Society requesting permission to close off the first 100 yards of East Garfield Street from the School Avenue westward for a small activity fair and a park auction from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. on Saturday, September 15, 2012. Rain date of Saturday, October 6, 2012. Move the request be granted, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Seibert, do I hear a second? Second, second by Alderman Martinson. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the request signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. We have no petitions. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only resolution 3108. Second. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Heisler. Any discussion about the motion to read by title only? All in favor of the motion to read by title only signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. A resolution transferring community development block grant funds. Do I hear a motion first? Motion, motion to approve. Motion to approve second by Alderman Honor. Silsby, second by Alderman <coughs> High School. Discussion. Alderman Hayden. I didn't. It says uh, item one, the city of Elvis received the key as indicated in exhibit A. Emily or Tim, do you guys, is this, Eric's not here at the moment. No, Eric, I'm This is for the purpose of transferring about $100. Well, we have, we have about money left over in our CDBG funds. We have to, by resolution, transfer from one account to another account, another account in order to close it. I don't, I don't have any exact dollar amounts. Eric told me it was only a couple hundred dollars from one roadway project to another project. So it's going from the what's left of what project? Do we know? Uh, Excuse me, Your Honor. I talked to Eric today. Okay. Okay. And I talked to Eric today, and I put it in my notes that uh, this is between 100 and 200 dollars that's left over in the 10th Street okay. project. Okay. I'm refreshing. And now. it's going it to be moved Street. over to the 23rd Street okay. project. But it is a very small amount. But because it's CDBG project. money, we have to have a resolution to do that transfer. Okay. I, I just wanted. Yeah. To no, I, I, and now he said that. As soon as he said that, I remembered it. I remember it. Just because you're going so we have a motion, we have a second to approve this resolution which deals with this uh, uh, CDBG funding. Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Mitzella? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Park? 
Sosby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Motion carries. We have no ordinances this evening. I don't know of any unfinished business. Yes, ma'am. I was a little confused about the answer on the sidewalks on Washington about why the property owner got uh, a choice. I didn't understand why the contractor didn't just. Well, first of all, there was three. Tim came up with three potential ADA choices. <coughs> and since we've met with the, the property owner, the property owner has agreed to write a check for the original temporary fix of $2,691. Sticks in my head. Does that sound right, Tim? Yes. And, and he's writing, he either has already written or he's going to write the city a check for that amount. The property owner was unavailable at the time. We had a situation right prior to that where the other building right adjacent, when its sidewalk was tore out, during a heavy rain, had 600 gallons of water in the basement. It had water in the basement. It had a lot of water in the basement. Because of, at that time, early on before Harbor Square, we were still getting some significant rain, which we wish we had now, uh, and we couldn't make a decision, we put it back as it was. Because we didn't want to have a trip and fall during Harbor Square, and we did not want to flood another basement and be liable. So we put it back as it was. It is true, true statement, that the slope did not meet ADA. But Tim had to come to the conclusion that there was three choices. He and the owner are figuring out that option right now, and before Hanks is done with the project, the, prop, the, the stretch of sidewalk right there will be meet one of the three ADA requirements. Okay, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we're charging the owner. Why? How did it The owner, when he heard of all this confusion, volunteered to pay it. Okay. Just volunteered and said, you know what, I can't believe this, but if this is the way it's going to be, I'll write a check. And that was the end of the story. And really there's nothing else. There's nothing done wrong. There was nothing, you know, this was made out to be some big mystery. It's not. No, I, my question is, how come when we reported that they didn't catch that the The project's not done. Okay. The pro is that correct, Tim? The project's not done. There's no total evaluation. And we never said it was a done project. We indicated right away it was a temporary solution. Okay, okay. So, I don't know what else to say. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask who the property owner is? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Schneider. 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 So when we talk, when I when we explained it to them last week, they just said it would be easier just to write a check instead of putting the mayor or anybody else to any more questions, and because nothing was done wrong, so they're writing a check. So. Can you tell us what the status is on coming to broadcast meetings? <clears throat> That's going to be on the agenda at the uh, um, next finance meeting was requested. If you like, I can give you an update tonight. If you, I met with Lyndon Wood this past last week. <coughs> had a very good meeting. We have a meeting that uh, Jerry Vladek is scheduling with uh, myself and a couple uh, staff people uh, with Charter Cable. And the terms, Rich Pepper and I and a couple of us are meeting, working out the terms. And uh, they're hoping to have their program, both radio and TV, up and running at Lindenwood by the end of August, at the latest. And they told, they assured me that in the very, very near future, a matter of probably days or a week or two, we will have particulars and have an agreement that they're going to present to us what they can do for us, much like what they do at the St. Charles uh, campus. That's great. So we're making progress. I don't have any exact particulars, but we, we're soon to have our second meeting with Charter at the table, and I think we'll have something productive to report soon. Okay, last question. I'm, I'm still a little confused on the occupancy. Are we revisiting the ordinance? What? Here's my situation. My kid decided not to come home between her sophomore and junior years of college. She's just staying over there working. There's still a ton of stuff in her room. I consider her still living at home. I think do I take her off? Do I? No. I don't think that's what we're talking about, Mr. Flynn. I, I got a daughter that's going to go to Germany. I'm not taking her off the occupancy permit, even though she's getting to the point where these days she won't be living at home. But you know, she's still in transit with education. Right. And, and her voter registration and everything is here. The question always is whether or not the person is a resident. Okay. 
That, that's the question. And you're no, her driver's license is still there. Her that's right. She's still, still, still a resident. There. Okay. Yeah, Can I say something? Yes. I have a situation, Melinda. My daughter, she got married, and then she was separated. She okay. moved in back with us. Okay. I went and got her permit because she was no longer, you know, she was married and what happened. But well, thank God it resolved her issue. But I went and got her permit because she had lived there, but then she got married and moved away. So I. I did. And there's always a good thing. So, Sachs, she's like your daughter is a resident of mine, wasn't anymore. So. Okay. Anything else under unfinished business? Or anything else under miscellaneous and new business? Yes, sir. Uh, your Honor, I'd like to address the council about the gambling because I had prior obligations. I won't be able to attend the gambling hearing later this month. Um, basically, I, I, I look at it this way, okay? Alton has a casino. Townsville has a horse track. St. Louis has a casino. If we miss out on this, we're going to be missing out on Redmond. Um, you know, I propose that the city limits the gambling permits to businesses in, in the city. Um, that way there wouldn't be a, a blanket of gambling going on across the city. Uh, I believe it, it, is, it is limited you know, by the liquor license. You have okay. to pour on site. Well, well I, I will explain what I mean by limiting. Um, I think the permits should possibly be around 20 to 25 across the city, and either by means of having a lottery so the businesses can randomly get chosen for the gambling in the town, or if the permits are a high cost to the businesses, that way not as many businesses would seek to have gambling in town. Um, as far as the revenue that comes in, I hope if possible that we can earmark the money for uh, hiring more police in town. And, that basically, I think it would be beneficial to businesses in town if this happens as far as restaurants and saloons. Um, people who come in from out of town to visit these restaurants and saloons. Uh, I look at it as people from Illinois go to Missouri for gasoline because it's cheaper, but if this would happen, people would be coming to Belleville, Missouri for gambling in our saloons and restaurants. That's all. And there are, I don't pretend to be Gaming arguments, but there are a lot of things in there, and uh, I think you probably have a copy of some of this when not, it's available online, etc. But uh, there's a lot of rules to all this, and uh, we'll be hearing a lot more about it. Motor fuel claims in the amount of $29,102.23. What's your pleasure? Thank you, Pedro. Motion by Alderman Seibert, do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Heister. Any discussion about motor fuel? Roll call. Eisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bolt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Regiment? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Park? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Aiden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. 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 Aye.